Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Strange Times Poetry Broadcast. I'm coming to you live from the Poetry Bookshelf to bring you three uplifting poems. Today I'm going to be talking about creature comforts. And what do I mean by creature comforts? One of the things that I've been thinking through in this time is how inspiring, although perhaps simplistic, I find it that my dog Isaiah is just so content and happy by the fact that we're all together with him all the time. He just needs that to stay happy. And I find that amazing because there's so many other concerns and I just get this strong feeling from him that if we're all together, we're okay. That's how it works in his mind, at least. Especially if we're all petting him at the same time, then he's certainly okay. And so I decided to bring to you three poems about creature comforts. The first, I'm changing the order up a little bit. Well, you'll see. The first is by famous author and friend Henri Cole. And it's from his collection, Middle Earth, which is a classic at this point by FSG. You should definitely check this out from your library. This poem is called Pillowcase with Praying Mantis. And knowing Henri, it just never, it never fails to make me chuckle just a little, imagining the speaker as him confronting a praying mantis. Pillowcase with Praying Mantis. I found a praying mantis on my pillow. What are you praying for, I asked. Can you pray for my father's soul, grasping after mother, swaying back and forth, mimicking the color of my sheets, raising her head like a dragon's, she seemed to view me with deep feeling, as if I were Saint Sebastian bound to a Corinthian column, instead of just Henri, lying around reading. I envied her crisp linearity as she galloped slow motion onto my chest, but then she started mimicking me, lifting her arms in an attitude of a scholar thinking or romantic suffering. Stop! I sighed, and she did, flying in a wide arc, like a tiny god horse, hunting for her throne room. I just un imagine Henri saying, Praying Mantis, go away! <laughs> and then I laugh. Every time it brings me a smile. <sighs> so beautiful. The tiny god horse hunting for her throne room praying mantis. I think it's just a fun one. There's, I don't think it gets that deep. All right. My next poem is by Denez Smith, who is more of an acquaintance. I had the amazing opportunity to meet them when they came and read some of their poems at UMass Boston back when I was a student. And this was one of the poems that Denez read. And I just... I will never live up to his performance, but it's an extremely joyful poem, and the creature of comfort is dinosaurs. It's called Dinosaurs in the Hood. Let's just make a movie called Dinosaurs in the Hood. Jurassic Park meets Friday meets The Pursuit of Happiness. There should be a scene where a little black boy is playing with a toy dinosaur on the bus, then looks out the window and sees the T-Rex, because there has to be a T-Rex. It's a dinosaur movie, duh. Don't let Tarantino direct this. In his version, the boy plays with a gun, the metaphor, black boys toy with their own lives and foreshadow to his end, the spitting image of his father. Fuck that. The kid has a plastic brontosaurus or triceratops, and this is his proof of magic or God or Santa. I want a scene where a cop car gets pooped on by a pterodactyl, a scene where the corner store turns into a battleground. Don't let the Wayans brothers in this movie. I don't want any racist shit about Asian people or overused Latino stereotypes. This movie is about a neighborhood of royal folks, children of slaves and immigrants and addicts in exile, saving their town from real ass dinosaurs. I don't want some cheesy, a progressive, mong, sexy, hot dude hero with a funny yet strong, commanding black girl buddy cop film. This is not a vehicle for Will Smith and Sofia Vergara. I want grandmas on the front porch taking out raptors with guns they hid in walls and under mattresses. I want those little spitty, screamy dinosaurs. I want Cecily Tyson to make a speech, maybe two. 
I want Viola Davis to save the city in the last scene with a black fist afro pick through the last dinosaur's long, cold blood neck. But this can't be a black movie. This can't be a black movie. This movie can't be dismissed because of its cast or its audience. This movie can't be metaphor for black people in extinction. This movie can't be about race. This movie can't be about black pain or cause black people pain. This movie can't be about a long history of having a long history with hurt. This movie can't be about race. Nobody can say the N-word in this movie who can't say it to my face in public. No chicken jokes in this movie, no bullets in the heroes, and no one kills the black boy, and no one kills the black boy, and no one kills the black boy. Besides, the only reason I want to make this is for that first scene anyway. Little black boy on the bus with a toy dinosaur, his eyes wide and endless, his dreams possible, pulsing, and right there. I love that. His dreams possible, pulsing, and right there. And I love how this plays with all of the scenes of the genre and how much joy it holds, along with also being a very strong, a very strong call for equity and justice. I love the moments of the grandmas on the French front porch taking out rafters with guns they hid in walls and under mattresses. This poem is so delightful. Like I said, go online and find a recording of Denez reading it. It will be 10 times better than I could ever pull off. But I wanted to share it with you to at least introduce you to it because of how much joy it contains. All right. And my last poem is about my creature comfort about Isaiah, sort of. And it's called In the Antipodes. And Antipodes is... The opposite point, if, you, if you're if you in one place on the globe, the, if you were to draw a beam or shoot a, shoot a laser through the globe, the exact point that that laser would hit on the other side is the Antipodes, and it's imagined as an alternate reality. Antipodes. I watch you sleep, kept warm by your own breath under the hood of the blanket. In Antipodean reality, we eat ice cream and cost cob with the fathers in yachtware and the Oreos are soggy. The dog returns again and again to the same hole to dig, chewing moss in small clumps, a collection of hopes in strange shapes. We park grotesquely at the grocery. I write poems and you write sermons where Abraham is always held back from sacrificing his son. The brambles hold a gift. So a couple of things about this poem. We park grotesquely at the grocery, I think is a true in-crowd in Greenwich joke because for some reason people here park so terribly. And so I imagine it joyfully that we would do it um, in this alternate reality. Um, and the, ser the sermons where Abraham is always held back from sacrificing his son this is referring to the famous sacrifice of Isaac and, to, and in this case, being prevented from doing it, not going through with it, and finding that in the brambles there's something that will save you. The brambles hold a gift. In the biblical story, it's the, the, the lamb that gets switched out. But for me, it, for me it opens this poem towards where, what is the gift in these brambles in a time where we're sacrificing a lot from ourselves in our own lives. And so I bid you find your creatures of comfort, your gifts in the bramble, and I hope you're staying safe and staying sane. Bye!